Okay, so the goal of this video is to solve exponential and logarithmic functions. We want to solve equations that either have an exponent uh, that has a variable in it, or perhaps it's in log form, and one of the three pieces, one of the three numbers that we usually see uh, in the log expression might be a variable as well that we'll have to solve for, okay? So we're going to start off by introducing this property. It's called the one-to-one -one property of exponents. And here's what this property is saying. Uh, it, the, the official definition's here for you to see. It's, it's saying that if we have b to the x equals b to the y, then x has got to be equal to y. So what does that really mean? All right, if I give you a problem and I say 3 to the second is equal to 3 to the x, okay? What we're basically saying is if the bases match, okay, then the exponents have to be equal to each other, right? I couldn't put any other number in this x position except for 2 and have it be the same as what we have on the left-hand side. So if we can get the bases to match, the exponents will uh, be equal to each other. And so we can actually extend that a little bit further and take it the other way and say, if you can make the exponents match, then the bases have to be the same as well, right? So you'll, we're going to see those two examples showing up right here in this problem, okay? so. We're going to do a couple of problems and, and see that in this example, if I wanted to know what x is, 2 to the 2x is equal to 16. Using this one-to-one -one property, what we can do is say 16 can be written as something with a base of 2. And in, exa in this uh, example, we could say it's 2 to the 4th power. Right? So because 16 is 2 to the 4th power, right? now my left-hand side and my right-hand side have the same base. Okay, and that means that the exponents have to be equal to each other. Right, so now that they both have 2 to the power, 2 to the power, I can say that in this case 2x has got to be equal to 4. Right, and then I can divide both sides by 2 and I find out that the missing exponent, okay, I'm sorry, the missing uh, variable is that x has got to be equal to 2. Right, so we're going to be looking at problems where your job is to convert between forms, take something like 16 and put it into an exponential form of the base of 2, right, and make it match the left-hand side. Okay? So I can do that same thing over here. We, we could take a look at something like x to the fourth and say, oh, I could fourth root that or something. Well, there's another way that we can handle this. We can say, if I can write 81 as something to the fourth power, then the bases would have to be the same. So in this case, I'm going to leave x to the fourth alone, and I'm going to say, well, 81, I can be, write that as something to the fourth power as well. Right? And so just in a similar way as this one, the bases match so the exponents were equal. If the exponents match, then the bases have to be equal. And I can just say that x has to be equal to 3. There's really no other number that we can put here except for 3 right, and have it be equal to 81. Okay? Um, what we could do with negative 3 as well. But you get the idea that we can, we can uh, start to eliminate a lot of possibilities by using uh, this one-to-one -one function. Okay, so let's take a look at some slightly more complex examples of the one-to-one -one function. So you can see in this problem, uh, my bases already match each other. They're both a base of 5, and that means that I can just go right to saying that the exponents have to be equal to each other, that 4x plus 3 has to be equal to 3x minus 2. Okay, I can subtract the 3x to the left, and I can subtract the x or the 3 back to the right and find out in this case that x has to be equal to negative 5. And that would be my answer there. Okay? So that's a pretty straightforward application of this. You can see the exponent looks a little intimidating. But once the bases are the same, you just set the exponents equal, and we're done. Right? So problem number 2 is a little bit uh, more complex, because now I'm looking at this 1, and I'm saying, how do I turn 1 into something that has a base of 9? And that you're going to have to go back and look at your properties of exponents. And one of the things that's important is that anything to the 0 power equals 1. So that's nice for us, because anytime we see a 1, I can actually make that any base. I can say this is the same as 9 to the 0 power. Or if I, wanted to do, if I had a base of 10 over here, I can make it 10 to the 0 power. Right? So I have lots of possibilities. So I made the right-hand side say 9 to the 0, because that's 1. Right? And now the bases are the same. They're both 9. And so that I could say now that 5x plus 2 has to be equal to 0. And I can solve this one and get negative 2 fifths. Okay? So your last problem here is kind of the most direct application of this. If I say 4 to the 2x plus 1 equals 64, we're going to say, OK, this is already a base of 4. And I can actually write 64. Instead of writing it at like that, I can write it in exponential form with a base of 4 as, as well. It's 4 to the third power. Okay. And so now that I have these both as a base of 4, I could say that 2x plus 1 has to be equal to 3. And again, I'll let you go through and do the solving steps here. x has to be equal to, oops, sorry, x has to be equal to 1. Okay? So I'm going to say x is 1. All right, so you can see this is how we can solve some of these problems. And again, remember solving. Just never forget this. If it ever says solve up here, we should be able to take that answer, that 1 or that 
negative 5 or whichever problem we're looking at, go back and plug it in and it should work out. Like if I plug this 1 in here, this says 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1, that's 3. This now says 4 to the third, which is 64. So I can check my answer and see that I am getting uh, a correct solution, that that is a good answer. Okay? So here's again some slightly more advanced examples. Right? We want to be able to take this to a slightly more extreme. Okay? So if I'm taking a look at this one, I'm looking at them and saying, OK, I can definitely write 81 as a base of 9, because 81 is 9 squared. So when I write it as 9 squared, it's like, OK, well, I have this exponent of x plus 1 up here. How do I connect that with this new exponent of 2 that I just introduced? And the answer is, you're going to multiply them together. Okay? So this is going to become a distributed 2. I'm going to multiply the expression x plus 1 by that 2. Okay? And on the right-hand side, I'm going to leave that alone, because I don't need to change that base now that they match. Right? So I'm going to distribute this 2 as I go and say that this becomes 2x plus 2 is equal to x plus 5. Okay? So that's, that's kind of a strange situation where I'm introducing the new exponent. We're going to multiply that together. Okay? So again, if I solve this one, I get that x has got to be equal to 3. Right? You'll get the same number on the left-hand side and the right-hand side if you plug in a 3. Okay? So the problem on the, uh, th these other problems are, are kind of a different situation. So you can see in, in this first problem here that I had one expression on the left and one expression on the right. And the property is called 1 to 1. Right? I want one base on the left and one base on the right. And I'd like for them to be the same. And now in these new problems, that's not the case anymore. In this case, I have two things on the left and one thing on the right. Okay? So let's start going through these, and we're going to go uh, uh, slowly. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get all three pieces, all three terms in this equation to uh, have the same base. right? Because we're still trying to get to that to use the one-to-one -to -one, the one -to -one function. So I'm going to look at 10, 100, 1,000, and say I can write those all as 10 to something power. So I'm going to say leave 10x alone. 10 to the x alone. Okay? I can write 100 as 10 squared. And remember, I'm just going to multiply that 2, this new exponent, with the one that was already there. And it's going to become 2x. And then 1,000 is 10 to the third power. Right? So I just started off by trying to get the bases to match, because that's how I'm, I'm going to be able to use the 1 to 1 function. Okay? So now we have to think about, again, properties of exponents. This is an exponential expression. And the property that we like here is if I'd like these two tens on the left to be combined so I can get this situation, this 1 to 1, right? Right now I have 2 to 1. If I'm looking to get this exp to, to become 1 base of 10, I have to think about how do I combine things that have the same base. And here's your simple example. If I had x squared times x to the third, right, the matching bases, like the same thing's happening here, and I'm multiplying in between them, that's what we're doing here. What would I do here? And in this case, I'd add together the exponents. I'd call this x to the fifth. So I'm going to say, well, if I'd like to put these two bases of 10 together, I'm going to add the exponents. x plus 2x is 3x. This is going to become 10 to the 3x power equals 10 to the 3. And now, I have this situation where I have one base on the left, one base on the right, and they match each other. So now I'm going to be able to say that 3x has to be equal to 3, and x has got to be 1. Okay, and that's my answer. So you're going to have to do a combining step, get the bases to match. All right, we did that by rewriting 10, 100 as 10 squared. And then you're going to use the, adi the uh, multiplication property for exponents, which says add the, keep the base the same, add the exponents. Okay? So here's our last example that we're going to do in this video. And this is like, oh, OK, now I have these fractions going on. How do fractions fit into the puzzle? Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look just at the numbers. Right? I know 1 3rd and 1 27th look a little intimidating, but let's just focus on the numbers. 3, 9, 27. What's the common base? Right? In this case, that common base is 3. So now I'm going to say, all right, I'd like really all of these to have a 3. I want them all to have a 3. Okay? So the 9's the easiest one. This is just 3 squared. Okay, and then again, multiply that with the base that's already there. Okay, so that one's taken care of. And now the question is, how do I take 1 third, or how do I take a base of 3 and turn it into 1 third? How do I take a base of 3 and turn it into 1 27th? Okay, and so again, you've got to go back to your properties. And here's the property that we're going to use for this one. And it says that if you raise something to like the negative first power, it's a reciprocal, right? A negative exponent turns a regular integer base into a fraction. So this is going to become 1 over x to the positive power. Same thing. If I had x to the negative 2, it would become 1 over x to the positive 2. 
And that's really what we're trying to do here, right? So I'm going to say in this case, 1 third is 3 to the negative 1 power, right? For the same reason that x to the negative 1 becomes 1 over x to the first, right? And again, I need to multiply this negative 1 by 5x, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. How do I get a 27? Well, that's 3 to the third power. But if I'd like a reciprocal to happen and I want it to be 1 over 27, it's going to become 3 to the negative third power, okay? So now I'm in the situation where I can put these together. So I'm going to do some simplifying first. This is 3 to the negative 5x now when I multiply together the exponents. When I distribute this exponent, it's going to become uh, 3 to the 6x plus 4. And then this is just going to stay as 3 to the negative 3. Okay? And so now I'm in really at the same spot that I was with these tens up here, where I can add the exponents to combine the two three bases of three on the left hand side. So I'm going to say negative five x plus six x is one x. So it's going to become three to the x plus four equals three to the negative three. And now that this is one base on the left, one base on the right, I can set the exponents equal to each other. Okay, x plus four has to be equal to negative three. And that means that x has to be negative 7. Okay? So you have to really go back and maybe review your properties of exponents. You can see that I used um, the multiplication property. If I'm trying to combine two exponents, right? I had to um, use multiplication. If I'm combining bases of this that are matching, I add the exponents. That's a different property of exponents. And if I'm ending up with fractions, I'm using the negative exponent rule. Right? We also, in a previous example, used the zero exponent rule. So you can see that you really might have to go back and review your properties of exponents right, uh, in order to handle some of these problems. But if, we're, if you're comfortable with those, um, you're going to see that you're just applying a lot of the properties of exponents to all of these problems.